the entrance antiphon for the Tuesday of the fourth week of Easter. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we celebrate still the resurrection of Christ and the joy that is inherent in that great event. Let us humbly acknowledge our sins before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray, pray for, for me, me to the Lord our God, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Thessalonica, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord, then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves, the gates of Zion more than any dwell of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God, all, all nations. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia. This man was born there, and of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her. And he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there. And all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. All you nations, praise the Lord. <clears throat> the 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. The Feast of Dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, continuing the history of the early church and the Acts of the Apostles, we hear about the city of Antioch, which is one of the very first great hotbeds of Catholicism. Uh, Peter was the first bishop of Antioch. In fact, his successor today could you know, make a claim to be the pope because he succeeds St. Peter as bishop of Antioch. But it's obviously that it's St. Peter as bishop of Rome that makes the man the pope. Because Rome is where not only where Peter died, but also St. Paul. But he mentions how uh, at the very last sentence that it was at Antioch we were called Christians for the first time. Very interesting. Because it was the third bishop of Antioch, the great St. Ignatius of Antioch, who called us Catholics for the first time. Very interesting. But in the Gospel, we're still hearing from the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel, and Jesus is talking about himself as the Good Shepherd. Yesterday I said that, you know, he was basically usurping a title that belongs to the Heavenly Father. Uh, in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, it refers to God as the Father, as the Roach Hall. In Hebrew, which means the Good Shepherd. And it's interesting how <clears throat> this 10th uh, chapter of John is broken down into two different sections. The first one takes place at the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Sukkot in Hebrew, in the fall. And the second half, the part we heard today, takes place at Hanukkah, or as some people call it, Shanukkah, um, which takes place in December, right around Christmas time. And uh, the reason why is because at these two great feasts, uh, the Jews had a liturgy, just like our own, and in our liturgy of the word, we read from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Gospels. So they read from the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, or the books of Moses, and they also read what they called the Haftarah, which was anything except the Torah reading. Well, the Haftarah readings uh, and, and the Feast of Booths is from the Good Shepherd, and the Haftarah reading on the Feast of Hanukkah is from the Good Shepherd. So yeah, you can see where Jesus is picking his, his spots here. And he's calling attention to the fact that God claims to be the Good Shepherd. Well, he claims to be the Good Shepherd as well. So it's very ironic when they come up to him and say, well, tell us plainly, are you are the one or not? Well, I've been telling you already, and not only that, I've been doing all these wonderful signs. What do you think all this means? Well, they were slow on the uptake. And then he just spelled it out explicitly, the Father and I are one. But the one thing in the Jesus is talking about himself as the Good Shepherd, and the prophet Ezekiel talking about God the Father as the Good Shepherd, that is missing, is the fact that Jesus keeps saying he lays down his life for his sheep. Uh, this is not in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, but it is in the 10th chapter of John. Because this ultimately is what it means for Christ to be our good shepherd, that he pays the price of our sin, that he gets us out of bondage, out of pot to Satan, that he truly is the liberator, the redeemer, and the savior. And in these times that are so worrisome, uh, we do have someone who is there advocating for us, someone who is there saving us, someone in whom we can put all our hope and trust, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, for he cares for us, as the good shepherd cares for his flock. And I thank you for listening.
Oh, Heavenly Father, we reach out to you now. We have so many needs and many fears, and you alone can quell them. So we turn to you, who are the source and giver of every blessing, placing our needs and cares confidently in your loving hand. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, that they will guide us to the holiness of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Say, so leaders throughout the world, especially those in our land, they will work to bring out peace and justice and safety for all people, especially to protect them from the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are affected by this, the, the sickness, the coronavirus, and other illnesses, that they may find healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are, all the laborers that are not working now, that they will find suitable work soon, especially to be able to return to their jobs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, those who have perished, family and friends, those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, you sent us your Son to be our Savior, and he is the Good Shepherd still tending for his sheep. May the sacrifice we offer today give you the worship you deserve from us. In the end, may it lead us sweetly into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice and yours. For we pray that your glory may be in your name, for God is the Lord of all the world. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up in our own heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Overcome, therefore, with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, <coughs> He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and your resurrection, <coughs> your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who we take away the sins, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, I would remind you we would do have adoration today until 7 o'clock this evening, starting right after Mass. Again, as far as the weekend, I still haven't heard anything from Archbishop Carlson. I would presume from that. Don't look forward to us being open again for Mass this weekend. But as soon as we get the word, I, as soon as I know something, I promise to communicate it to you. Uh, look on the website. That's probably the best and most secure and quickest way of getting information. But we will send out letters and maybe make some phone calls, too. But uh, like I say, I'm probably not this weekend, maybe the weekend afterward. But no official word as of yet. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. O Mother of perpetual health, to thee we come, in imploring help. Behold us here, from far and near, to ask of thee ourselves to be. Behold us here, from far and near, to ask of thee our help to be. Most holy and immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. We come to you today. We thank, you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. O Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and to do all in our power to lead others to you. Mother perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, we ask you to obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, perfect love for Jesus Christ, and a holy God, live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us now kneel to pray together in faith. O Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires in us confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call upon you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal wives. O mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems that we face each day. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring us misery everywhere we meet the cross. O comforter of the afflicted, Beg your Son Jesus to free us from our suffering. Or if it be the holy will of God that we should suffer still longer, help us to endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your Son, and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves to the care of our Heavenly Father. Let us stand now and present our petitions and our thanks. O Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to your people gathered here to honor our mother of perpetual health. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Robert, our priests and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Establish peace and unity through all the world, but especially in our homes and families. 
Grant that our children respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit to deepen their faith and to discern their vocation in life. Grant us continued health in mind and body and help the sick, especially those suffering from the corona and for an end to this dread affliction, to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our beloved dead, especially those of our families and parish, and to the souls of all the faithful departed. And let us pause now to present in silence our own petitions to our Mother of Perpetual Help. O Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the Church. We thank you, Lord, for the Accept our thanks for all the spiritual and material blessings we have received. We thank you, Lord, for and let us now pause and in silence thank our Mother of Perpetual Health for all the favors we have received. And now let us kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, look upon your servants who labor under bodily weakness. Cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed through your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. O Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the Mother of the Redeemer, but the Mother of the Redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. As you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms. Be a mother ready at every moment to help us. For God, who is mighty, has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and thus become lost children. Intercede for us, dear Mother, and obtain for us the pardon of our sins, perfect love for Jesus Christ, final perseverance, and the grace always to call upon you, O Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us renew our act of consecration. United with the members of your confraternity here and throughout the world, we consecrate ourselves to your service. We promise to renew this dedication once a month and frequently to receive the sacraments. We beg you to obtain for us the grace to imitate your great servant, St. Alphonsus, in his love for you and for your son. And let us now stand and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her most powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. And let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your Mother Mary, whose image we venerate to be a mother ever ready to help us, Grant, we beseech you, that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruits of your redemption. This we ask through you, who live and reign forever. Perpetual help, we beg of thee, souls from sin and sorrow free. Direct our wandering feet aright, and be thyself our own true light. Direct our wandering
straying feet aright and leave thyself.